Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to call this meeting to order the Mayor and Board of Commissioners for June 13th, 2017. Will you rise with me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Will you bow your heads with me for a brief prayer, please? Father God, I come tonight on behalf of the town of Rising Sun. God, I ask that you watch over our citizens, watch over our elected body and their families, continuing to watch over our police department uh, and the emergency services of Cecil County. Uh, please be with the, uh, the children that were in the bus accident earlier today uh, near Northeast. Um, I ask that you're with those families as well uh, and the victim that was in the car. Uh, I ask that you watch over our troops serving overseas and be with us as we leave here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Can I get the roll call, please? <coughs> Commissioner Arthenweath? Here. Commissioner Braun? Here. Commissioner Pearson? Here. Commissioner <coughs> Warnick? Here. Mayor Marion? Here. Let the record reflect that all elected officials are present. Thank you. All right, first on the agenda is a public presentation for the Center for Watershed Protection and Ecotone presentation on Veterans Park Stream Bed Restoration Project. You want to take this over? Yeah, so uh, as uh, you all know, we've been working on a project at Veterans Park that will help eliminate some of the stormwater runoff um, from surrounding properties, as well as uh, a stream bed restoration uh, of one of the tributaries of the Stone Run that runs through the park. And uh, tonight, the Center for Watershed Protection and Ecotone will be presenting uh, the plans for that work, as well as uh, hopefully we'll have a timeline for, we should be starting here very soon. Yep and they'll have all that information. So with that, I'll, Brian, I'll turn it over to you. Great, thank you, Commissioner. Thank, thank, thank you all for having us tonight. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to share with you uh, the project we've been working on at Veterans Park. My name is Brian Seip. I work with the Center for Watership Protection. Uh, I'm a project manager there and um, represent sort of our team. Uh, we are also, our role in this project is to do some of the design work, which we'll talk about in a minute, but it's also to help the town uh, manage the grant. All of the funds for this project are being paid for through grant funds or have been already provided uh, from the county to get us to the point where we could apply for the grant. Uh, so we are uh, facilitating the reporting and helping with ensuring that all of the invoices and bills and everything are lined up. Uh, the DNR trust fund grants great source of money but a uh, bit of an admin burden and so we're helping with that. So uh, Calvin if we could show the next slide I can uh, get into the, uh, the the purpose of the project and what we're doing. Uh, so the, the key uh, purpose of the project is to improve the conditions of Stone Run. We worked on a watershed plan a number of years ago uh, with the Octorera Watershed Association looking at Stone Run. A number of projects were identified uh, in that plan, uh, some of which have been uh, built and some of which are, I think, planned for the future. The uh, the project, the wetland down at Triangle Park is an example of one of those projects that was completed. I think the county might be working on some others at the school. I'm not, I'm not sure for, um, for sure on that one, but there are a number of projects that were identified to help improve Stone Run. And these projects at, at Veterans Park were some of those. Um, so there's really three specific uh, project areas, or four really, that we're looking at. Um, one is there's an existing wetland down there now um, <clears throat> at the outlet of a pipe. Uh, the pipe is submerged and very difficult to maintain, for you guys to maintain. So we'll be uh, essentially backing that pipe up off of the wetland and creating a area, a stone four bay area as it's called, to distill any of the uh, sediment and debris that comes from the neighborhood and allow for easier maintenance uh, in the future and also maintain the integrity of the wetland. Very simple, small project. Uh, there is a small bioswale area that's designed to catch runoff from the baseball diamonds uh, where the water basically comes down off the baseball field and turns and goes through the park. I have a map I'll show you in a minute, um, or uh, we'll show you in a minute, <clears throat> that illustrates that area. And then we have what's called a regenerative stormwater conveyance, which is essentially a uh, step pool uh, structure to uh, <clears throat> reduce some erosion that's coming from a pipe uh, coming from the road that's really blowing out the hillside along down by the, uh, the DPW yard. Um, <clears throat> that, was, that area was identified by Rupert and the uh, University of Maryland as a significant source of sediment during rain events, so we'll be addressing that as well. 
And then, of course, we'll be looking at um, the additional work <coughs> there in Stone Run itself, the bank stability, creating an area where kids can interact with the stream, uh, also dealing with um, you know some of the erosion that's ongoing there, and the issues with the stream alignment with the bridge uh, where the road crosses. So a few things going on there. Uh, we'll go into detail on, on all of those. Laura will present on the upland projects that are designed to reduce the volume and and velocity and some of the sediment coming from upland areas and John from Ecotone will talk a bit about what they're doing in the stream. Uh, but ultimately we're trying to reduce sediment and nutrients which is the goal of the Chesapeake Bay uh, and well, watershed and the Chesapeake Bay program and obviously that's why we got the funding from the state of Maryland to do so. So Calvin, next, next slide. Uh, real quick, our project partners on this of course are you all with the town. Uh, we uh, are, are very grateful to have this opportunity to work with you guys. Uh, Maryland Department of Natural Resources provided the, all of the funding for final designs, permitting, and construction. Uh, so, and Cecil County provided funds for the concept designs, which we used to actually get the grant funding. I have some stats on the next slide to provide you with some additional information. Uh, obviously, us, the Center for Watershed Protection and Ecotone, are the design team. Uh, Octavera Watershed Association is involved in some of the outreach and education. We'll be continuing to use this area for education and outreach to the kids as they move forward. And the University of Maryland Sea Grant is also involved in the project to provide a lot of advice and support and will continue to obviously promote this and use it for educational purposes in the future. So that's our, our core team. Uh, next slide, uh, Calvin. Um, real quick on our funding, we did receive just shy of $8,000 from uh, the county to do the concept designs. That was enough to get us to the point where we could get a grant application, and it's probably the bare minimum, uh, but we were able to figure out, you know, how much things were going to cost and what would be involved with that $8,000, and enough to get us in the door for the trust fund. So the trust fund is funding us at uh, just shy of dollars uh, so three quarters of a million dollars is going into this project, again, all from state funds, um, and will be supporting us through construction. And uh, we're looking forward to um, yeah, taking the next step, which is really the fun part, is getting things moving. So right now where we at is we've completed designs. Uh, we have permits uh, either in hand or should be in hand very shortly. Uh, a few minor uh, administrative things to take care of, but we should be looking forward to going to construction on some elements very soon and at least going to bid uh, to get construction contractors on the other elements very soon. And we'll, we'll share that timeline at the end. Um, so ne next slide, Calvin. So uh, with that, I will just highlight these areas. Obviously, uh, the stream running down the middle of the park, as you can see, uh, basically from the wood edge, the woods edge, down to the bridge is the target area for the project. Uh, the wetland, um, you can see there, um, the bioswale and the RSC. The RSC basically goes up alongside that. Uh, that, that star is basically where it would sort of outlet the um, or where it inlets, it basically runs down the hillside along the, along the, bi the baseball diamond there and, and dumps out at the stream. And uh, if you're brave enough to walk back in there in the brush, there's a pretty, uh, pretty vicious uh, uh, cut in the slope there with uh, what car parts in there and <laughs> anything that anybody could throw in there. Some Just mattresses, all kinds of stuff dumped in there. So all that will be cleaned up. We'll clean that whole area up, replant it, and it'll be... Uh, look much nicer than it does now in terms of uh, its visual appearance. So uh, with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Laura, who's the engineer on this project, and she can share some of the specific details on the individual projects. Okay. Um, yep, my name is Laura Gardner. I work for the Center for Watershed Protection. I'm a civil engineer there. So um, if you can do the next slide. We'll talk individually, briefly, about each of the project locations. Um, the wetland is the simplest project. You can see in the existing conditions where the uh, brush area is, that's the existing wetland, and there's the inlet pipe that comes in right where the vegetation starts. That's very difficult to get out to access to maintain. So really our plans are proposing, um, you can see on the right side, the top view of it, is to just have a riprap, a more open four bay area, <laughs> remove some of the pipe, make it easier to get in there, make sure that any sediment that comes in will be able to be cleaned out easier before it gets to the wetland. And then right where the wetland ends, right before it hits the stream, is to have a uh, rock outfall, basically, to stop any additional erosion that might come through on bigger storms 
when it makes its way through the wetland area. And then we just have a proposed no mow area just to kind of make the wetland area a little bit bigger. It's a little, I mean, it could be undersized. It's really just based on the maintenance area of it. But that is our um, proposed top view of the wetland project. Next slide, please. And then the bioswale, um, if you can see in Veterans Park where the basketball court is, and then there's the park pavilion, and the area that I have kind of blocked off, that's the location where this bioswale will put in. Um, on the right half of the slide, you can see, again, the aerial view. And the bioswale, or bioretention, or rain garden, if you've heard all those terms, are basically similar interchangeable um, uh, stormwater retrofits where we're putting in where the pipe comes in under the road off of the, uh, where the uh, ball fields are. If there's a little bit of erosion there, we'll put in a stone forebay again, so it's easier to clean out. Again, with all the sediment that comes off of the ball fields, we'll capture it in there instead of having it race through the park when it does have those big storms. And then it enters into a two cells of the bioretention. Basically, we'll plant that with really nice flowering shrubs and plants. Um, so when it rains, the water will come through the forebay over the stone channel into the cell, fill up a little bit, pond a little bit. It'll filter through the media below, and then the plants will uptake some of it before it in goes into the next cell. And then any extra water, there's an under drain that will run from the bioswale all the way down to the stream to make sure that there's no additional flooding. So only the really big storms should you see over top everything that continue on the way it does now. So it should help contain some of the runoff that comes off of the ball fields. Um, and it should be a nice feature there once it's all planted and grown up there. Next one, please. And then the regenerative stormwater conveyance, or step pool storm conveyance, as some people talk about it. Um, the existing conditions on top, you can kind of see the line where I drew where the practice will go. It's very wooded. It's very overgrown. There's lots of invasive species in there. There's a lot of erosion. And what's going to happen with this project is we'll take out a lot of the invasive plants, some of the trees, and we'll put in a series of pools that'll work its way from the top of the slope down to where it meets like the floodplain. So when, with all of that in there, um, it will be a lot clearer. We're going to plant a lot of trees to put things back in, so eventually it will grow on again. But the water will have a chance to slow down, pool, work its way down the slope, and it should stop a lot of the erosion that's going through there now. Um, so, and it will fix the, um, if you've been back there off of Derry Road, there's um, private property, that last building you see on the slide up there, there's a big ditch. It's surrounded by snow fence. It's kind of a hazard. All that will be filled in. We'll put a pipe in to connect it. And all of that erosion should hopefully stop once this project is complete. Next slide there. Any questions with the projects? I do have a set of the plans here if there are additional questions or people want to see more detail. <coughs> I think it'll probably be done um, all around the same time if we do get one contractor to work on all the projects. Ideally, we'll, ideally we'll have one contractor work on everything together. Um, at minimum, the wetland and the bioswale will be done about the same time. In between, um, I know there's ball leaks going on. I'm going to make sure we avoid the scheduling for that. Um, but I do think, and Brian, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we'll try to get everything done this year. And if anything would go long, we would maybe get a grant extension to do planting in the spring, but um, we do think everything will be finished by the end of this year. With this new system where it runs under the road down there on Popa, will, it help? will that uh, will all this stop the erosion coming down and underneath there? That was on the other side? The stream. Oh, oh, the other side of the bridge as it goes, goes, yeah. goes back around, there's like an undermined bridge back there. On the other side, it kind of wraps around and then goes, yeah, goes down and then wraps around. <clears throat> Should help with some of it. I mean, it's a fairly decent sized drainage area to it, and we're controlling what the town can control, what we have access to. So we can control some of it. We'll make some improvements, but you know, additional actions we need to be taken. A lot of the runoff comes from way upstream on the other side of the railroad tracks yeah. outside of town. So, but I mean, it's within town. The amount it'll it'll reduce the amount of runoff coming down out of the park and into the stream because a lot of that just flows straight down through there. We have erosion channels back in the woods that are multiple feet deep at this point, and especially up at the very top where the outflow pipe that we're starting at. Uh, I mean, that was actually only maybe this deep two years ago when we started this project, and now it's it's probably about four feet deep. So, a little, a little, dam, a little 
from January up there. They yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> On rainy days, generate yeah. some electricity. Yeah. Questions? All right, thank you. Good evening, my name is John. Uh, I work with Ecotone. I'm a restoration designer for them. Uh, I worked on Veterans Park. Uh, we're based out of Forest Hill, Maryland in Hartford County. Um, so as you can see right now, this is Veterans Park. Um, partnering with the town and uh, CWP as well in this project. So scope of work, uh, this is an aerial of the park. Um, we're doing approximately 706 linear feet of stream restoration. The stream is remaining in the same location. Um, we're doing some minimal bank grading, but all in all, um, open areas around the stream are remaining the same. So these are some pictures of the existing stream right now. Um, this is upstream of the bridge. The footbridge is remaining. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of bank scour going on here. Um, We've got some trees that are leaning over the stream. Um, you can see a lot of tree roots making their way through. Um, so it's not a very stable stream as it is right now. I believe there's another slide with some more pictures. This is downstream, uh, closer to the culvert again. Um, you can see the bank migration. Um, the bank's falling in the stream. Um, there's little buffer area, um, which is also leading to the degradation of the stream. All right, so uh, for our proposed design, a few of the features we're going to be using is tow wood for bank stabilization. Um, we're going to be adding some more riffle material, um, some more structures to allow for a more stable stream. Um, we're going to be doing some tree plantings and some live staking um, and some grading on the benches. And I have example pictures of all these. So. so this is a project we did in Bel Air, Maryland. Uh, it was Plum Tree Park, a community park similar to this. Um, this project was completed in 2012. Um, these pictures were taken about a year ago. Um, so on the left, under live staking, you can see these are basically just willow segments that we cut about a foot long, stick them in the bank. Um, the wet soil allows them to grow, um, provides great, great bank stabilization, um, and it's a long-term practice. And then you can see there's some bank rating leading into the culvert um, at a better approach angle. Uh, this was a project we did in Baltimore County. Um, on the left, you see some tow wood, which is uh, composed of some root wads and log segments that are mostly buried in the ground, um, so you only get to see a little bit of the top segment. Um, this is great for, we put around meanders for bank stabilization um, that we'll be implementing for the park project. So any trees we remove in the project um, will get used in construction, so nothing's going to waste. Uh, and then on the right, you can see a log vein structure. Um, we're proposing four of them in the stream. Just um, helps maintain the stream um, and provide some grade control. This was a project in Darlington. Um, on the left, you can see some step pools that we're proposing. Um, this is a good interaction area for anyone that plays in the stream. Um, and it also provides grade control. And then there's also another picture of tow wood. So um, we always describe it just like when you're remodeling your house. Um, it's going to look worse before it looks better. So it's always better to be prepared. Um, we're going to have heavy equipment, excavators, track trucks. Um, we're accessing through um, the parking lot off of Hopewell Road. Um, and we'll be pumping the stream every day during work hours. Um, and we're going to have orange fencing up. So we ask that um, the public stay out of the construction area at all times. Um, we have a pretty friendly construction staff. So if you have any questions um, and you can flag one of them down, they'd be happy to talk with you, answer any questions. Um, once we know what form is on site, <clears throat> excuse me, he'll be there every day. So, so this year you're going to shut the park down. No, um, I mean, the, so the playground area, um, the basketball courts, um, the majority of the park is staying open. Um, really, we're just closing down the stream area. So again, my name's John. Uh, if you have any questions, be happy to answer them. Um, do you have a, a target date for starting this? So we'd like to uh, start construction in July. So 
And then also question, what, what is the, the health of our, our stream? You know, because one thing you did say that I liked is because <clears throat> kids love to play in those streams. And uh, parents are going to ask, is it safe? Is there anything in there in the water that they need to be concerned about? I know <clears throat> uh, right down by Buck's Restaurant here where Stone Run goes underneath, we see a lot, I see a lot of fish in there. So mm -hmm. to me, that's a good sign. Yeah. But down around our park area where they love to play, are they going to be okay? Sure. It, I think the conditions are pretty fair around here. I mean, I don't think there's anything major. Obviously, after any rain event, whatever's on the ground is in the, in the stream. Yeah. So, you know, pet waste, livestock uh, waste, that can end up in the stream and that can have some bacteria. So kids probably shouldn't play immediately after rain event. But base flow is generally pretty clean. Uh, Rupert and the, the folks at the Octorola Watershed Association do a lot of water quality testing and they'll be doing a lot of testing at this site after we're complete to continue to track that. So hopefully over time uh, there will be additional information available to the citizens here about what is the quality of that water and how it's reacting you know, to our project. But certainly I think on base low condition days it's just you know, kids stay for kids to play. I probably wouldn't want my kid playing, you know, 10 minutes after it rained, especially if it hadn't rained in a little but while. But generally, I mean, when we've had a week like this yeah. where you've had it rained a couple of weeks and it's, it's okay for them yeah. to oh, yeah. wait around and play. Mm -hmm. And a couple of things, we, we actually had uh, in, this incorporated in design, one of the things that we were stressing was that there's a large contingent of children that play in the stream and that we wanted to have some kind of like a splash zone for the kids to play in. So that was actually put into the design near the bridge. Where most of them play there's actually an entry and exit and foot bridge did, yeah near the yeah. existing bridge did we put in there I, I know there was some discussion of possibly making it handicap accessible <laughs> the grade would be so um some of the places the bank grading is a little bit less shallow we're probably um closer towards hopewell road um and we uh, are not planting parts of those sections so that you right. don't have to you know make your way through tall grasses and trees to get to it yeah, I think uh, when we originally did this grant, when we were pulling the proposal together, uh, we took the DNR project managers out to the site. And I think, to be honest with you, what won us the day was there's a lot of kids playing in the stream there. And DNR wants the money to go to places where people have an opportunity to interact with the environment, particularly children. And I think they saw Veterans Park as a great place for DNR to spend some of their money, not only because it's a you know, a stream that needs some attention, at least in terms of its stability, but uh, also because kids are there and they're enjoying it already, and if we can make it better and safer, right. then that's <clears> all the way. Exactly, exactly. The only thing that I would add is I want to potentially have um, some examples of your presentation and of yours, uh, because you can see attendance at town meetings, it's sure. not that high. Um, we do have uh, ways of reaching our residents, whether it's social media, um, or putting it out on our site, oh. making sure that we show what it's going to look like before, what it's going to look like after, and you know, be patient with us. Just like he said, you know, it's going to look bad before it gets better. Yeah. So, I can, I can provide. We can develop whatever you need. Um, well, what, what I guess what I'm going to ask is, is it possible to have a post like a board there showing what? Because as the parents come through. They're going to see it, and that's where our support will come from. Absolutely. I don't know if you remember, Brian, when we did Triangle yeah. Park, yeah. how we had a board very yeah, similar to sure. that. I think something like that would be good. Yeah. With LGM, yeah. I'd be happy to communicate with you to make sure the board is, matches what your expectations are, and we can provide whatever information is needed. With the project sponsors so and that kind of stuff yeah, on there. Yeah. people, and then hopefully when it's done, we can provide you some longer-term signage. Um, yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, Alan, to what you were saying, um, we've actually, Rupert has uh, been had the high school kids out there measuring the water quality over the last couple of years at least, as well as, um, it's not, is it Van Funk that does the, the water quality? Yeah, Van. Uh, Van yeah, Van, yeah. There, there's a group that they go around and they measure, and Van actually is out measuring the stream quality. I, I've run into him on the weekends out there on his own. Yes, at Watershed Steward Association, and uh, Brian Leitner, who works with us, um, he's been doing a lot of the projects over at Dog Park, and, and as well as Veterans Park, the, some of the plantings that we've done the, back in that open area. The area that you showed Pauline and I on that day we were out there, mm -hmm. um, 
next to the public work building. Is that so it's clear that area is going to get yes. Yes, tore out and replanted because that was so, I mean, that was a month ago, but it was so overgrown we couldn't even get in there to see yeah. what was going yeah. on. Yeah. How about that stormwater management pond that's on our public works property there? That's, that's not part of this. So that's a, we're looking at, actually, Laura and I talked about this just last Are uh, we still going to need to do something with that? Because yeah, it's, we're gonna, it's yeah. broke through. So we were talking about that about a month ago as well as um, the area up by the the Little League field that's closest to the park, it's actually the big field where the older kids play. That area, there's actually a significant distance between the road and the fence for the field. And the way that sloped, we're looking at another possible project was to divert the water that's coming down off the fields and along the road further in away from the road into a, <clears throat> like a retention pond before it gets to the park, which would allow us to capture a lot of the silt and possibly recycle it back onto the fields even. So that, because that, that silt's like $1,000 a ton. And uh, if we could capture it before it goes into the park and downstream, then it would save the league a lot of money. So well, you mean it's washing off of the yeah. baseball yeah, field? A lot of the silt, out. a lot of the, when you see brown water flowing through there, a lot of it's the, that really expensive soil. It, it's like a really refined, right. yeah. like, mix of, like, soil. And I'm, I can't remember exactly what all it is, but it's, it's like $1,000 a ton. It's a really expensive soil they use on the little league fields, yeah. and it just washes away. So, you know, there's not a whole lot they can do to control it, but uh, we're hoping we can possibly recapture some of it. And One other it. question. On um, the other side where the uh, log cabin is, the old scout cabin, that pretty steep hill, do you get any problem of, of water runoff from that hill, Dave, or coming into the stream? We, that, we do have water running down through there, but there's, I mean, it's, you have grass on that hill, so probably don't have a lot of sediments running down with it. Back in the woods, we have really significant, on the other side, we have really significant cutting where there's trenches back there that are approaching three, four feet deep in different locations. Um, some of them are getting pretty wide too, you know, probably two to three feet wide. So right. we've, we've probably got like thousands of pounds of soil have washed out of back there over some period of time. Uh, it's also cutting down through the park because that's actually on the Legion property. A lot of this works actually, the bios, or the, uh, Are these that part is being done on the uh, Legion's property. And um, it actually stops kind of right at the line between the Legion's property and the town's property. And the reason for that is once you cross into the town's property, you get into wetlands. And so we would need a lot more permits and it's, it's a much bigger ordeal right. to start touching any of that. So we're yeah. trying to prevent the water from getting into the park to begin with. Um, we're mostly addressing the water that comes off of 274. There's a pipe that comes out by the public works building and where that snow fence is, there's really significant cutting there. That's mostly water off of 274 <clears throat> flowing down through the park. There's additional water that comes off of the church parking lot. And at this point, we're not um, really, I mean, we're addressing that a little bit on the lower end, but we're also working with, uh, you know, Brian and uh, I think, I don't know if John, you were out there. Actually, Laura, I think you were there. Um, University of Maryland, uh, Eric Buell from University of Maryland, as well as Rupert and myself, we were all out there looking at the parking lot for um, and Bud McFadden for uh, uh, St. Agnes Church to uh, possibly work with them because again, it's a it's public use. It's kind of combined between the church and the little league, and that parking lot has a significant amount of water running off of it. Yeah. The uh, we're working with them to try and put in a, a, a pervious parking lot there, which would actually allow the water to come off of the church and the road and that the driveway and everything. It would come down to the parking lot and it would soak in, and um, rather than just run across the parking lot, down through the park and into the stream. You know, again, all these projects were trying to capture the water as close to point source as possible, as far upstream, uphill as you possibly can to minimize the amount of water running down through the stream. Right. So, did I explain that well? Yeah, that's excellent. I've become an environmentalist over the last three years. Yeah, you're, you're hired. <clears throat> Thank you. So we'll, we'll happily reach out and figure out what you need for the summer and see how the other operations here. And I won't be offended if you guys need to go because you may be bored to death with this kind of stuff. So, but thank you for coming. Yep. Thank you very much. So Appreciate you guys. Yeah, I mean, right now. Yeah. Very good. Commissioner Pearson. Well, good evening, folks. Um, we do not have in the town animal control uh, officers. So uh, we're partnering uh, with the animal control uh, 
parts or the, of the county. So I'm going to read a resolution that, that makes this official. You have your zip drive. You, John, your, your, uh, your zip drive, your, John. Your huh? drive. I was going to throw it, but I thought that would be rude. <laughs> so I'm going to read the resolution. Okay. Town of Rising Sun, Resolution 2017-07. Animal Control Services within the incorporated limits of Rising Sun. Whereas the town located in Cecil County, Maryland, <laughs> is a municipality organized under the provisions of the Maryland Constitution and governed under the provisions of the local government article of the annotated code of Maryland and whereas the town is proclaimed as a perpetual entity with the right to pass laws and whereas the town of Rising Sun desires to continue a prior arrangement with Cecil County, Maryland the county to have all issues related to animals running at large, abused animals, dangerous animals, and all other related issues to be covered and regulated by section 142 of the county code and enforced by the county's animal care and, set and control authority as attached to this resolution as appendix B. And whereas the town desires to retain the services of the county's animal care and control to provide such enforcement of section 142 of the county code to include complaint resolution enforcement and all other powers granted to this authority as set forth in the code and is detailed in the memorandum of understanding attached to this resolution as appendix a therefore the mayor and commissioners have reviewed the attached documents and hereby desire to enter into such memorandum of understanding with the county in order to provide these services to the residents. Therefore, it be it further resolved that the mayor and commissioners of the town of Rising Sun passed, approved, and adopted this resolution on this 13th day of June 2017. Can I get a motion? I make a motion that we accept the uh, memorandum of understanding. Second. There's, there's been a first and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, I just noticed that in the uh, agreement, I just want to point this out, that um, the county will provide the services for the town without additional compensation, including providing all required insurances, facilities, staff, salaries, benefit, tools of the trade, materials, supplies, medicine, and veterinary supplies as required. In other words, this isn't going to cost the town anything, which I think is an Correct. important note. <clears throat> All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. All right. Um, we can't go into that. Uh, it's in definition. Right. There, that, that's a very gray area. <laughs> Citizens input, Ms. Maynard. He's been called a party animal before, but let's rip up flags. This is for Mr. Peterson. First of all, um, curfew. Since school's out, I think we need to be stepping up the curfew. We have 11 to 12 year olds floating around Saturday evening at 10 30, 11 o'clock at night with no parents out there watching them. Why was the um, residents of Valley View not notified about the incident with the machete? Why was there? Why were we not notified of that? There was no threat to the residents of Valley View. The kid was taken into custody immediately. But the girl was from Valley View. Yeah. The kid was taken into custody. There was no threat, no person still out in the community. How did you know? I mean, not to be, I'm not trying to be smart. How did you know? How did you know we didn't? Have somebody else that out there? Based on the investigation, the number of people that witnessed the incident and brought it to our attention, the one actor was taken into custody immediately. Okay. Would anyone else like to speak this evening? All right. I got. It. I got. Chief. 
back on the bank robbery, why wasn't there something put out about that? You got you got a guy running around with a gun. Why wasn't the residents of the Rising Sun going to buy on an emergency system? Yeah. Where was their gun? Well, whenever the bank was robbed. Where was their gun? I, I don't know if I'm, I'm asking, was there a gun? No, sir, there was no gun involved in the bank robbery. The robbery investigation was turned over to Cecil County Sheriff's Office. As policy dictates, we do not comment on each other's cases because there's information that one agency may want released and the other agency does not. So all formal um, releases of information were directed to uh, Cecil County Sheriff's Office. Is there any way that you could put something out if there's something like that that happens in town? Because if people are aware that's what's going on, they might see something or be looking or they could even, I mean, we live right in town, we're always afraid some, somebody would come running down the field or something. But if you don't know anything, how can you work? I understand what you're saying. However, sometimes it is best for us not to put out information, okay? Sometimes it's best for us to withhold information. We do take into consideration if there's a threat to the public at large on most cases and on all cases um, before we put out information. Um, in that case with the bank robbery, if we would have put out too much information or any information from this agency, it would have ruined their investigation. Turns out the person was apprehended, um, but if we would have put out something wrong, they could have you know, not apprehended that person. But I'm asking, is there a system that if there is something that has to be put out, how do you how do you go about putting that? How do we go out? Yes. If it's a, so if the, the um, if there's any immediate danger to the citizens, you will see the Nixor alert. You will also see uh, a an alert come from the Department of Emergency Services, which hits every cell phone in this area. Okay. All right, Chief. Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mr. Uh, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, Ms. Maynard pretty much touched on one of the things that I uh, had to say. Yes, today is the last day of school, um, and the we have noticed an uptick of underage kids out and about at night. Um, we've also had an uptick in juvenile-related crimes um, just recently. So if you see something, say something. Give us a call. Um, I encourage you to dial 911 to call us, not just leave a message downstairs on the phone. We are short staffed, so the probability of getting that message off the phone line right away is not that great. All right. Um, for the period of May 30th through July 13th, we responded to 176 calls for service. Um, the officers used eight hours of holiday, 24 hours of sick leave, and 24 hours of vacation. During this time period, we made one arrest for uh, heroin, one for vehicle theft, two for fraud, one for first degree assault, two for second degree assault, um, one violation of a protection order, and we had one subject committed with an emergency petition. Um, also, we arrested three juveniles for burglary and one for a second degree assault. Traffic wise, um, you may have noticed a better presence of Maryland State Police um, during the evening hours. They've been requested to assist us with the commercial vehicle traffic that is coming through town as part of the problems we are having on Wilson Avenue and some of the other roads. Um, so you will probably see that continue for a while. Um, as far as Wilson Avenue goes, the signs have been ordered for that roadway uh, to reduce the amount of truck traffic. They haven't arrived yet, and as soon as they arrive, we will proceed with uh, um, designating those roads as uh, 
trucks below one ton. Okay. Um, as far as the traffic goes, along Main Street, there were 14 traffic stops. Along Walnut Street, there were uh, two traffic stops. Mount Street, there was one. Pearl Street, there was three traffic stops. Uh, along the other roads, there was one. Um, we investigated one school bus accident. And as far as the events go, this is, uh, I overlooked that. We did uh, um, have a presence at the Sunfest. There were no incidents there. Um, the only thing we really handled was a lost cell phone. And again, um, as you all know, we're operating short staffed. So if you have a call for service, please dial 911. Um, I know there's questions about how quick you can hire an officer. I can give you references from other communities who are looking for nine officers. They receive numerous, numerous applications, and they still have five vacancies. It's not that easy, and it's a time-consuming process. Um, with that being said, that's my report, um, unless there's any questions. The, uh, the Wilson Avenue signs. Yes, sir. Will that eliminate the mushroom trucks? That should eliminate the mushroom trucks. Um, granted, we're not all law abiding citizens, so we'll try to change human behavior with uh, enforcement. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Town Administrator, do you have a report this evening? Yes, I do. Um, one thing I want to um, bring the board up to speed on and the public up to speed on is in the budget process. Um, unfortunately, we had a um, setback a couple weeks ago in which um, we were not able to have a budget meeting. So that has put us a little bit behind in our schedule. And although we are pretty much now down um, all the items, I still think we need to have two more budget meetings with the second budget meeting being the one that potentially the board would adopt the budget. So the board should uh, take that into consideration, especially when you're gonna see later on in the agenda that the next town meeting conflicts with the MML conference. So I'm recommending that we have uh, two more budget um, discussions before, uh, with the second discussion being the potential adoption of the budget. Um, I also want to remind um, folks uh, that may be watching the video that despite the perception that has been put out there that the town raised its taxes, uh, tax rate, I want to remind everybody that on April 25th at a town meeting, the town adopted a resolution maintaining the tax rates and with the assessment, the overall assessment of the town dropping by 1.77% that the town has actually lost revenue um, tax-wise. But I, there's, for whatever reason, there's this perception or mindset out there that some folks keep insisting that the elected body raise the taxes, and that is not correct. Um, the other thing that I want to clarify um, that I've been approached about is at the last meeting, I made references to the appeals process for tax assessments. And I thought I was very clear at the meeting that my concern about tax assessments is that in the state of Maryland, the local agency does not, is not given a chance to at least offer a statement at an appeals type setting. In other words, anyone who wants to appeal their taxes goes before a board and you present your case, but there's no counter case made by the taxing entity. And I know I was very clear that I think we have to be concerned about large development projects and commercial properties of multi-millions of dollars 
that get to go in, especially in this particular case, with out-of-state attorneys making an argument to the Maryland State of Assessments that the property value should be decreased by $2 million. That's a lot of tax revenue. My statement was not about people should not have the right to appeal their assessment, and I said nothing about residential properties being able to uh, not be able to appeal their assessment. My focus is on large commercial properties, and we've had two now that have been able to reduce their tax assessment by over $2 million. Multiply, divide that by 100, multiply it by uh, 48 cents, and you come out to about $10,000 of lost uh, revenue just on the real estate side. So I'm doing everything I can um, to make sure that the town is not as impacted by declining property values that we've talked about in the past. And someone or we collectively need to be on guard, especially for out-of-town businesses and out-of-town entities just making arguments to lower their taxes, and we don't get a chance to say, hey, have you considered this? And that's, that's all my statement was, was to protect, uh, to, to warn us to protect the town against that type of activity, because it just makes it that much harder to provide the surface services and maintain the tax rate the way it is when we're losing money in that manner. So I want to be clear about that. Mount Street, um, as the board knows, we um, have a property on Mount Street. Um, it has uh, officially connected to the town's sewer and water. Um, they will be paying uh, impact fees as part of the connection to the town's sewer and water. So that project, if you down, go down Mount Street and you see the front yard uh, with the straw and uh, grass seed on it, that is the property that project has been completed. The other thing that's been completed is the agreement between the Town of Rising Sun and uh, State Highway to plant trees over at the sewer plant. There was a little bit of a delay in that because somehow a different map got submitted in the, uh, what we submitted and what the state had in front of them were two different things. And the second map would have required a larger area of planting of trees. So when that came to uh, the staff's attention, we raised an objection to that and got the original map that you folks agreed upon, which is a smaller area uh, and more uh, beneficial to the town. So that's been completed. Um, <clears throat> Commissioner Arthur Reed, under his report, can talk about the good news regarding the master sewer and water plan meetings we had with the county. Uh, from the Chester Water Project standpoint, um, we have submitted the construction permit to MDE. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> we, <Siri> doesn't agree. <laughs> we have submitted um, the construction permit to MDE, and we have received their comments, everything is on schedule for the town to get its permit to begin construction of the water line. Uh, right now, the tentative schedule is to begin uh, actual construction around October. And one of the reasons for that is Chester Water on the Pennsylvania side has a couple of environmental issues that they have to ad address regarding endangered species. And quite frankly, it's green snakes. And Just it is- Just don't tell me bog turtles. Well, bog turtles was in there too. <clears throat> However, the, the, um, the timeline is affected by the green snakes because they cannot put a shovel in the ground until hypothetically the green snakes go into hibernation, and that is typically the first or second week in October. So that's why the schedule's being delayed a little bit, because they cannot put a, a shovel in the ground on the Pennsylvania side until uh, the snakes go into hibernation. Um, as you know, we have been talking in the past about we potentially relocating the public works garage from its existing location on Derry Street over to the sewer plant. There is um, some money left over from the original sewer plant project 
that um, if, and I've said this before, if we were to turn it in, turn it back over to USDA, it does not affect the loan payment. It does not affect the sewer and water rates. It just means that the loan would be paid off, about a 40-year loan would be paid off basically a year ahead of time as opposed to as, as opposed to 40 year loan it would be a 39 year loan that doesn't have as much of an impact on our situation as relocating the public works garage over to the sewer plant which could put all of our public works activities in one location and it could also potentially set the town up to be able to sell the dairy street land over there to more of a light industrial commercial enterprise and get that back on the tax roll. Meaning the sewer plant is always going to be a tax exempt property because it's municipally owned. So why not get all of our public entity stuff over on that tax exempt land and then sell the land that's currently occupied by the public works to get it back on the real estate tax roll. So it's just another way we're trying to be creative to bring revenue in and keep uh, costs to our residents down. Um, the paving of Wilson Avenue, as you recall, we um, in our budget, we have been <clears throat> playing around with the idea of buying equipment for our public works employees that would not only make it so we can cut down on contracted services of repairs that occur, but would also put us in a position that instead of doing nothing to some of our roads and waiting for them to get to the point where they have to be completely repaved, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, we could invest some money in equipment that would allow us to uh, repave larger areas, patch larger potholes, uh, in depressions in the road to add more life to the uh, to the roads themselves. So we did a trial run on Wilson Avenue and uh, paved about an area of about maybe 10 feet wide and maybe 150, 200 feet long. The patch, the guys did a very good job on it. The patch is still holding up. The residents over there are very happy. Uh, because that area had really been damaged by uh, the mushroom trucks and created a, a lot of debris and stuff washing up in the people's yards. So it'll be great when we are able to put the signs up there about the truck traffic because those trucks will tear up the patchwork that we just put in there if we do, uh, uh, do not do that. Um, you might have noticed, especially during um, Sunfest, that... Uh, our public works employees did a lot of work in cleaning up the town square area. We also spent a little bit of money and repainted the crosswalks uh, with the red, the red uh, paint looking. Um, we also had the contractor, Chris Wiggins, uh, redo the blue line for support of police and the red line in support of our other uh, emergency responders, uh, fire and EMS. We are waiting. We had asked State Highway to repaint the areas on the other side of Main Street. State Highway was set up to do that, but the other Department of State Highway came along and tore up all the sidewalks. So the, the, the agency or the department that was going to repaint the sidewalks, the crosswalk said, well, they're tearing up the sidewalks, you missed your opportunity. So we've asked State Highway to come back, and as of yesterday, they have said that they cannot get it in their schedule to come back. However, they do have to come in and do some repairs still some follow-up repairs to the sidewalks that they did. So we've asked them if we purchase the paint, our guys can paint it, but we'll utilize their flaggers that are gonna be out there uh, providing uh, traffic control and safety for the people working on the sidewalk. So we're still making an attempt to get all of the crosswalks uh, repainted. I also think it's important to take the time to on that subject to once again uh, say a big thank you to Chris Wiggins, um, who does a lot of <coughs> work for the town of Rising Sun, um, and he did a great job out there on the uh, crosswalks. He also seal-coated the police 
parking lot, you notice that, and our people were able to come in and uh, repaint the handicap striping. He did not charge us for seal coating the police parking lot. And as always, Chris does a lot of donation of services, not necessarily to the town, but to the residents of the town of Rising Sun to do his part in making the community look uh, nice and clean. We were trying to seal coat the municipal parking lot. However, with the weather, we were not able to do that prior to Sunfest, and we didn't want to put all that money into seal coating it and have all the vendors out there twisting and turning of vehicles and trailers and stuff to tear that up. So in the next month or so, when there's a break in the weather and the schedule, Chris is going to come in and seal coat the municipal lot. Um, we are also, as part of the preliminary budget, we are going to be moving forward with some crack sealing and line striping of our roads. Again, this is a, a continuing effort to not wait until the roads get to the point where we have to do a complete overlay. If we can get out there and start sealing along the sidewalks, any cracks, any old patching that's been done in the past, we can crack seal them now and add a couple years to the life expectancy of some of the roads. So there's a lot of stuff going on in terms of maintenance in the community and to get ahead of wear and tear. That concludes my report. Thank you, Town Administrator. All right. Next on the agenda is the Mayor's report. Uh, I did want to thank uh, Chris Wiggins and our Public Works crews and even the Town Administrator because it's been probably half a year that I've been asking to get those uh, sidewalks repainted, so they look terrific, and I'm excited to see the other ones um, get done. Uh, Calvin, I was wondering if you can pull up our town Facebook so I can show the cover photo um, on our town Facebook. In the meantime, uh, I wanted to say uh, a huge thank you to the Rising Sun Chamber of Commerce, to our police department, and to our public works department uh, for Sunfest 2017. Um, it was an amazing event. It was great. Um, I have to admit, being here as a commissioner and now as mayor, this is the first time that I've actually seen an entire elected body there at the exact same time interacting together. It was great. Um, so I want to thank every single person sitting up here uh, for taking the time out on a Saturday to be there, uh, to spend most of your day there, uh, and to interact with our residents. Uh, I was in the dunk tank. Uh, I guess you can say either I was less not liked or more less liked than Mayor Tom because he actually won. I came in second and Jim Emberhart came in third uh, for most dunks and most money raised um, for cancer. Um, so we also, uh, a huge shout out to our elected body and police department. We won this year's tug of war. Uh, so that was great. That was definitely from um, Augie holding us down and the chief holding us down in the back there. So um, uh, they made sure that that, um, that we ended up hub winning. The, the anchor definitely helped. Um, so I also wanted to say, and Calvin is showing it right now, uh, we have a new slogan for the town of Rising Sun. We debuted it at Sunfest. It's called From the Crossroads of History. Uh, you can see that that is our photo, and what you're seeing up there is actually uh, a Rising Sun baseball team uh, from back in the 1800s. There's pictures of our main street up there. Uh, there's also a picture of Frederick Douglass, who uh, spoke here and took a liking to the town of Rising Sun, um, and General Kirk. Uh, General Kirk was uh, born here, raised here, uh, and he ended up uh, working his way up to Army um, Surgeon General. Um, so he served in not only World War I, but also in World War II. Uh, he became known as um, basically the king of prosthetics at Walter Reed. Um, amputees would come in, and uh, he revolutionized uh, how we treated them. Um, so those are two great men that ended up coming from Rising Sun. But Rising Sun has a rich history, whether it is from having two signers on the Declaration of Independence um, to the, the, the stage stop between Philadelphia and Baltimore. Um, Rising Sun has a great history, and I'm excited to uh, present this slogan. Uh, I know the board, we, we were all a part of putting it together uh, and worked really hard. Uh, we've actually, we have t-shirts that are now for sale. Um, along with our Back the Blue t-shirts, we have our uh, I Love Rising Sun t-shirts. Thank you for modeling it, Lisa. And on the back is our slogan. Uh, believe it or not, we sold $1,200, almost $1,200 worth of t-shirts at Sunfest. Um, the, the funds from those t-shirts will actually go towards our police breakfast uh, and also to our community events fund. 
Um, so I'm excited about that as well. Uh, we are continuing to sell t-shirts. They're downstairs uh, available now. Um, every day the town hall is open uh, and we'll be selling them at different events that we have. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I also wanted to say a huge congratulations to uh, the Rising Sun High School graduates of 2017 and to the middle schoolers who were promoted. I was actually their guest speaker last night. Uh, it was a great event. Last but not least, I wanted to read this letter. Um, and this came to me in, uh, tonight in the town administrator. Uh, this is something that we presented our District 35 team with a huge thanks. Uh, this is from the Secretary of uh, the Maryland Department of the Environment, and it says, Dear Mayor Marion, the Maryland Department of the Environment is pleased to advise you that for the fiscal year 2018 capital budget provides grant funding up to $500,000 for Rising Sun's water extension project. This capital project plays a vital role in the efforts to restore and protect the waters of Maryland and will help provide a better quality of life for those living and working in the town of Rising Sun. This funding commitment is an, ex is an example of state and local governments working together to ensure a better future for our citizens. The Maryland Board of Public Works must approve the funding before construction can be begin. MDE's project managers will contact their respective counterparts in the town of Rising Sun in the near future to develop project schedules and assist with program requirements. Please note in acceptance of these funds, all program requirements must be met, which may include cost share participation by local government. And it was signed by Ben Grubbles, the Secretary of uh, Maryland Department of the Energy, excuse me, Maryland Department of the Environment. Um, but we did a huge thank you to uh, Senator Wayne Norman and to Delegate Hornberger and the District 35 team for all their work in securing this. Um, I know um, Commissioner Othan Reith was vital in that as well. Um, so we're going to continue to work with them to see if the town of Rising Sun can get more relief for our residents. Uh, and we look forward, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Commissioner Othan Reith as well, uh, because we did go to the county and um, we were there together and it was a great night for Rising Sun. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Commissioner Othan Reith. Thank you, sir. Um, just a few things real quick. Uh, as the mayor said, congratulations to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, um, and our police department and the town itself and, and everybody involved in another very successful Sunfest. Um, this, this spring I've been able to be involved in more events than I've had in the past because usually on Saturdays I was um, involved in school at Cecil College. But uh, from the Little League Baseball Parade this year, the Fishing Derby and Sunfest, um, I think we have the best family-oriented uh, events uh, going on uh, just the amount of families that come out for these events has just really been impressive this year so congratulations to everybody who puts that on and to uh, our Chamber of Commerce who under Vince uh, Bud McFadden um, Norm uh, Hunter and of course our Commissioner Dave Warnick played a, a vital role in that the past few cool. years and so um, another event I attended uh, recently was the Meadows Farm, uh, just on the east side of town, <clears throat> they're in the process of repurposing their dairy farm um, for events. Um, they had a first responders event day Saturday. Um, the I think because of um, graduations and, and everything that was going on this weekend, they had a, a low turnout, but it's a beautiful property there. Uh, can fall under the agritourism banner that Cecil County is very known for now with Kilby Creams and um, Milburn Orchard. Also, wish them the best of luck. They've got a uh, bluegrass event coming up in July, and they're looking forward to partnering with us in the chamber uh, for fall events and fall fest and uh, things they have going on. So, watch for um, advertisements for the events they've got going on out there and support them. It's a family that's been here for years and they got a beautiful property out there, and uh, wish them the best of luck. Uh, on the water side, uh, as town administrator and the mayor were mentioning, we had to get some uh, text amendments and map uh, amendments approved by the county and the planning board. Uh, through detailed work and, and staying in communication with them, they uh, approved uh, the planning board uh, made a motion to approve to the county council. We went to the county council meeting last Tuesday. Um, Dave and the mayor and I were there, and town administrator and our representatives from KCI, and they approved the text amendment for the water line and the map amendment that was needed. And 
because they had all the information up front, they didn't have to question us. They, they knew what was going on, and it, it went into their master water and sewer plan and their comprehensive plan. So they approved that. It's one more giant hurdle that we've overcome uh, toward getting your, our permits and everything approved by hopefully the end of this month in, in July so that we will be ready to, uh, next step, uh, go into construction. Um, so that, that's all I have right now, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Commissioner Braun? I have nothing to report. Thank you. Commissioner Pearson? Yeah, I, I just want to reemphasize what Calvin said earlier, that last meeting when we talked about tax assessment, we were talking about businesses, not residents. Uh, became very evident that somebody thought we were talking about uh, residents and made a, you know, made a um, somewhat false statement about how we were going after residents. It, we're not. It was the businesses because just recently a shopping, one of the shopping centers was able to reduce their tax assessment even though they made some improvements to it with different businesses moving in and we didn't have a say in it. So they actually increased their business which normally would have potentially led to us getting a tax assessment increase but we, they appealed it, and we have no say in that. Um, and that's what the entire thing was about with Calvin saying that last week. I just want to make sure that, er, that we understand our appeal was for businesses only. Uh, that's all I have. Uh, there. Thank you, Commissioner Pearson. Commissioner Warnick? Yep, so uh, in addition to the presentation we had earlier, so we have a number of... Uh, um, I mean, we, we actually are going to be starting on that project here soon. I'm excited about that. Um, during the construction, as uh, John from Ecotone had stated, uh, we'd ask people to stay out. There's going to be uh, orange fencing around the project, and uh, there'll be, like, no trespassing signs and such uh, in the work area. The question of um, what part of the park will be impacted, it will mostly be on the side with the Boy Scout cabin. And uh, so there's going to be an area over there along the tree line where they're going to have uh, equipment storage, uh, spoils, things like that. So the spoils would be like the dirt that they're removing and going to be using later in the project. So <clears throat> most of that will happen on the other side of the park from the playground across the stream. Uh, so on the south side of the park along the driveway over there. The construction entrance for that will be over there. Uh, Chief, that actually may be, so if we restrict the Wait, well, we'll see if we can bring them in from the other direction so they're not coming across. Wilson. I mean, you're doing maintenance to a yeah. town facility, I'm sure that's something the town is going to yeah. allow to happen. Well, yeah. I mean, maintenance vehicles are probably exempt from most of what you're doing. Yep. So the, um, that, that project will be kicking off, and we're hoping to have the stream bed restoration. Well, they have to have it done this summer because of uh, the permits for... Um, working in the stream area are specific to a certain time of year and uh, the rest of the project will have hopefully most of that done um, this summer sometime over the course of the summer too um, movies in the park schedule has been announced uh, thanks to the mayor for uh, coming up with the list of movies and um, and setting the dates and such uh, working on the locations everything uh, so he made the job really easy this year all I got to do is show up and set up equipment and play movies um, the first movie on July 1st is uh, Beauty and the Beast, which is also known as the Travis and Dave show. I don't know why. It, it just seems like, you know, I mean, I, I was kind of insulted by, by being called the Beast. I, I just, I don't know. Anyway, that's at Diddy Richardson Park across from Town Shopping Center. Um, uh, that movie is rated PG. The uh, other two movies will be August 18th and September 15th. We'll have more information out on those. Uh, the August 18th movie, Sing, will be at Kilby Cream again this year. And the September 15th, uh, Star Wars Rogue One, which is PG-13, um, will be at the Richardson Park. So, uh, As uh, Calvin alluded to earlier and was kind of skipped over on the agenda, the next town meeting is set for uh, June 27th, which most of us, if not all of us, I think will be at MML. Um, 
I guess, do we need to make a motion to cancel that meeting? Or So I move that we uh, cancel the June 27th meeting due to the conflict with MML. Okay. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, town residents will be receiving postcards for movies in the park. From uh, They are actually being sponsored by Puro Clean. So yeah, they're a restoration specialist who contacted us to get involved and they covered the cost of the postcards. So we'll be getting a check from them. So that's good. And we're still looking for sponsors, right, Dave? Yes, we are. We still uh, need sponsors. So we're looking for sponsors. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Calvin, do you, do you have any information on Riviera Maya's opening yet? It seems like they've done a, uh, a long way with the work on that, that place. They originally said it would be May. Uh, but I've not received an update yet. Okay. Also, I think, th I think the reason, sorry to interrupt, I think the reason why is I want to make sure that um, we're there. So I don't want it to happen while we're at MML and then miss it, you know? Yeah, that's what I was going to say because they, they look very close. I have a note here on my desk that Moore's Chapel UMC will be hosting uh, VBS from June 19th to the 23rd, 6 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. at Moore's Chapel if anybody's interested in that. And... Uh, um, also, the final thing uh, on SunFest, I, I really can't stress enough um, what a great job uh, our public works guys did this year on, um, you know, cleaning up and new stone around the, the stage. And, I mean, it, it looked really, you know, all the striping and everything that uh, Chris Wiggins and uh, his people did and the different partners that worked with him. The, um, I mean, it looked really great this year. It was brought to my attention a number of times by uh, you know different people within the chamber as to how good everything looked this year. And uh, we had we actually had a record number of vendors this year. I think it was 128 unique vendors in over 140 spots. And we had, um, it. I would say, I mean, at least since I've been involved with SunFest, which has been a number of years now, that this is probably the greatest turnout we've had. It was, it was just mobbed this year. You couldn't walk through the place at times. So I was, uh, that was really exciting. And um, I really thank everybody for their support. All right. Last but not least, I wanted to remind everyone that there's a school supply drive from the anonymous people that give a damn about the community um, from starting on July the 15th to August the 1st, June 15th. Uh, so it's basically all summer. You can stop by the Rising, Rising Sun Herald and drop off school supplies uh, or contact Lisa, Hol Lisa Tome. Um, but... Uh, give back, give back to the kids in need. Uh, over 641 kids they're trying to serve this year. Um, so with that being said. Mr. Um, Mayor, I have one more thing. Uh, traditionally, when we have a holiday, uh, for example, when we have Thanksgiving on Thursday, we normally would give off the employees the Friday also. Coming up on 4th of July, 4th of July is on a Tuesday. Going with past policy, we would therefore give our employees off on July the 3rd. Um, I make a motion that we give our employees off July 3rd and July 4th. A second. There's been a motion and a second. All in favor? Excuse me, any discussion? It's I'll, a big vacation week, so I think that's it's a good time anyway. All right. Things are slow. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes. All right. Uh, <laughs> planning commission meeting is on June the 19th, 2017 at 630. Uh, we're still looking for members of the planning commission, correct? Yes, we are. We're looking for somebody for appeals, and we're looking for chief for the, the board. Okay. Is there anything else to come before the board this evening? All right. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye.